first memory of your personal strength, your drive, when you knew you had a competitive spirit? Whew. Jumping in with both feet. The first one where, you know, that I think was really on me and I put the effort in, I was consciously working hard towards it. Um, when I was probably about 12 years old, um, I, was, I was a heavier kid. Um, and, and I remember, like I always got picked on for it. And you know, I remember we were playing soccer at recess one day and, uh, and I kicked the ball and it shanked off to the side and went way out in the field. And one kid came up to me and go, get the ball, fat ass. And I remember, oh, I, oh, I cried and I cried. And, and I remember getting home from school that day and I said, no. Um, started eating cans of tuna in water, uh, bags of spinach, and I would do sit-ups, push-ups, and run on the treadmill. Um, 12 years old, I put on the hoodie, put the hood up, and just like go in the dirty basement uh, running on this old treadmill that I was kicking around down there. I'd run six, eight miles. Um, so I think that was the first dose I had of like, if you want to do something, like, just go do it. Start working towards it. I think <clears throat> I think younger kids well, I think I think it applies to everyone. I think the general population doesn't realize how powerful they are. If you want to do something, start working towards it. One day it just clicked of like, all right, well, I'm going to start working towards that. You know, it's not going to happen overnight, but like my pursuit of it is going to be relentless. I'm not stopping till I get there. Uh, what is the word pursuit? Progress, not perfection. Uh, I don't care if you're running towards your goal, if you're on your knees fucking crawling. Just stay pointing in that direction. Keep chugging, you'll get there. So I met Matt back in 2013 through a mutual friend. Started out really like protecting Matt early on with a lot of business deals um, and spending a lot of time with him um, traveling the world to competitions and you know fast forward today we're you know I call him my best friend at this point point. and I'm not his coach but I'm, I call myself a caddy so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm Matt Fraser's caddy Matt, Matt's constantly pursuing greatness is really what it is. He knows there's always more, there's always a way to get better. What has Matt given or taught you? His constant pursuit of, you know, his limit, his goals, uh, it drives everybody around him, including me. He really understands that there are two decisions you can make in any situation. A decision that's going to bring you towards your goal or a decision that's going to bring you away from it. Now those are things that I embody in every decision that I make or, you know, wanting to grow my business or wanting to just get better at something. He's like, okay, well, what are you, what do you want to get better at? Okay, well, why aren't you good at it? What can you be doing? to be better at it and I mean those are all of the things that he breaks down daily um, and to make himself better and so to have that example around you 24 7 is just such a I'm very grateful for some of the trials and tribulations that he went through that you know now he's figured out a different way of living and that not only supports our family but it also it bleeds into everything that we do. What does the word better mean to you? I, I'm always trying to build, I'm trying to be a better person. I'm trying to be, have 
better skills, better at anything I do. That's why I got sober was to be better. So I don't know how many people know I'm sober. I was 17 years old. I had some great opportunities in front of me. Um, I had been offered a full ride scholarship to the Olympic Training Center. Uh, got to pursue my Olympic dreams at the best place to do it. And, uh, and you know, I just, uh, I just kept fucking up. I knew I had an addictive personality and uh, it was showing. When was the moment or the day or the month, the year, whatever it was, the moment, the impetus of when you said, I want to find my sobriety? One night, got in trouble, I came home, and it was that my dad wasn't mad. I, I came home, I showed him the paperwork of, you know, the fines I'd gotten and the trouble I'd been in. And it was, he was just like, he didn't even interrupt his phone call. He didn't care. And it, that broke my heart. And that was, a, that was the last night I drank. So I really just secluded myself. Uh, I started working out like crazy. I was in the gym one day and he came up and he said, hey man, how you doing? And I just broke down right in the middle of the gym. And uh, he pulls me out of the gym and uh, we're in the stairwell and he's like, dude, what is going on? I was like, ah, like, I quit drinking like two weeks ago and I just, I don't know how to do it. And he's like, oh, easy. Start coming to meetings with us. At 17, you, you link up pretty quickly. And so we became very, very close. We were attached to the hip for a long time. And, uh, and we literally just drove around. We, uh, we drank energy drinks, smoked cigarettes and hit meetings. That was our lives. That was our my senior year of high school. Was hanging out, hanging out with him. And uh, I, when I moved away after high school, uh, he relapsed. Open up the line of communication. I want to start writing letters and uh, make some phone calls. And, uh, my dad called me back and. I said, hey, talk to, talk to him, and uh, Nate killed himself last night. Hmm. Fucking miss you. Fuck, sorry I didn't call. Something like that happens and uh, makes you realize like, nope, not taking that chance. Uh, you know, your addiction, it's not like you press pause and it, when you relapse, you just hit play and you start off where you left off. Your addiction's out in the parking lot doing push-ups. It's getting stronger. Okay. What's a full life? Right now, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm a happy man. Uh, I'm, I'm living a life that I did not think would be feasible. Same with Sammy. How, uh, how does she support your drive for uh, success and your pursuit of that? I don't know where to start on that one. Um, so Sammy, Sammy like is 
my people, like my network, my support. She's everything. Um, I think the biggest thing she does is just love me. And it's not dependent on anything I do, how I dress, how I look, nothing. It's, so that's a, a very big security blanket to me to push me to gamble on myself, push me to take a chance at this very risky career. Um, because I know if I fail, nothing changes. Nothing, nothing with her at least. Who's Matt Fraser in 10 years? If you asked me that question 10 years ago, my life right now would probably be the last answer. This was never part of the plan. This was, I never saw this coming. Um, so I hope in 10 years, it's the exact same. I hope I'm doing something that I never saw coming. I hope I'm doing something that I'm head over heels passionate for. hope that I'm just striving to be better at whatever it is. I don't, I don't know what the task will be, but I know I'm going to work my ass off and try to be better every day at it. Nice and soft. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Nice and soft. And we can't call them talking anymore. Now they're just seasoning. No, yeah, I put that shit on the bottom. The toppings and seasonings, but hmm? what's the difference between toppings and 
Because <laughs> it's on the bottom. Toppings, so it's not toppings anymore. <laughs>